Batia, welcome to the uh, Glenn Beck program. How are you? Oh, man, thank you so much for having me back, Glenn. It's you, such a pleasure to be here with you. You bet, you bet. So I, I have been saying for a while now, as I'm looking at what the Western world, the elites, are doing to their own countries and our own civilization, they are impoverishing people. They are giving our stuff away to other people. Um, and I mean that in Europe and here where, where illegals are just permeating uh, the country and the jobs are going there. They're, they're disarming us. They're, they're selling us bound and gagged to our foe, it feels like. Is that what's happening? Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. Glenn, you've been on this for such a long time because you're so clear eyed about this. There has been a massive plunder of the middle class Mm -hmm. by the elites. First, they shipped good manufacturing jobs overseas to build up China and Mexico's middle class. Then they said they're not coming back. Right. We're never going to get those jobs back. If you want the American dream, you have to go to college where you'll become, you know, a card carrying Democrat. Right. And now they opened the border and brought in 15 million illegal migrants from failed socialist states to to undercut the wages in the jobs that remained here. And it's because fundamentally to the elites, there's no difference between being working class and being poor. They want everybody to be poor because they control the college educated and the poor. That is why they're trying to get everybody out of the middle class. And either into the college credentialed, you know, leftist elites or to make them poor because that's how the Democrats win. So, uh, wow, I've never heard that uh, that opinion uh, before, I think, where they are intentionally doing it because they can control the poor. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, otherwise it makes no sense, right? I mean, where does the contempt for the working class come from? Where does this plunder come from? Why would they have sold out labor, right? Remember, the Democrats used to represent labor. Why would they now be so committed to making working class people poor with these policies that you talk about all the time, Glenn? Opening the border, bringing in massive, massive amounts of competition for the working class. Like, who would do such a thing, right? It's, and it's not an accident, Glenn. Of course, this was all intentional. Joe Biden showed up and on day one undid the three executive Trump orders, right. which secured the border. Why would somebody do that on purpose, right, well, if they didn't want people to be poor? It's amazing to me also that the labor unions are part of it. I mean, the Democrats were always for labor, you say. They were always, they, they did seem to represent the working class much more, but it was their love of the labor unions. The labor unions are still with them as they are helping them dismantle American jobs. A hundred percent. And I think that's why you see only 6% of the private sector is unionized. Working class Americans, they may want the wages and the protections that unions can get their members, but they see the unions actively supporting the party and the policy of importing their competition. And so they don't see a future for themselves in the labor unions. And, you know, Joe Biden likes to say he's the most pro-union president mm-hmm. to ever you right. know, rule. Well, may- maybe that's true, but the unions themselves are no longer able to represent their actual members. Correct. Although I have to say, I thought it was great that Trump went and met with the Teamsters and that he, you know, he yes. got a donation for the RNC from the Teamsters because yeah. it shows that the Teamsters are listening to rank and file, who of course prefer Trump. So uh, you say that the Uh, The working class in America is super diverse, but united on the policies that they think would make their lives better. And you say that is true whether you're a Republican or Democrat. Where is that unity on policy? What are those policies? Right. So for this, for my book, Second Class, How the Elites Betrayed America's Working Men and Women, I traveled around the country for a year interviewing working class Americans of all races, of all backgrounds and religions and many, many, many different industries um, totally across the country. And what I found was so much more unites them than divides them. First of all, polarization a totally elite phenomenon. And I know your listeners know this because I know you have a strong working class listenership. 
they know that they would never hate their neighbor just because they happen to vote for another party. They, they hate both parties, by the way. You know, there's a lot of contempt for the elites in the political class who love to go to Washington and fight with each other, pretend they're fighting with each other while both parties, you know, have turned their backs on labor. Here's what I found was the most common views. So I met a lot of people, including a lot of Christians, who had a gay person in their life who they wanted to be treated with respect, but they were extremely worried about the transgender agenda. I met a lot of people who were really unhappy about how much welfare there is and knew people who were scamming the system, and they were very frustrated by that, but they also really didn't like that corporations seemed to them to be, you know, against their interests and that they, there was so much support for corporations and not for them. They were very against immigration. Most of the people I interviewed, including the Democrats, wanted something like a total moratorium on immigration, but they also felt like there should be some sort of government-backed catastrophic health care. They couldn't stand the idea that they work with their hands and their bodies and physical labor and they can't afford good health care. So you see how their views are sort of, they united the working class, but neither party really aligns with those set of views. So how come, because you would say, I, I mean, I, I don't want to make this into a partisan thing, but let me, but I think I have to. Um, when you're looking at Donald Trump, that is, that describes him respect for gay people. He, you know, he, he is, he is, He's the first president to ever uh, have gay people openly speak at the convention. He's very open to that. But he is also uh, doesn't want to be harmful to transgender people, but is against all of this craziness. Um, w- when it comes to the, um, the, the they're very against immigration. That is huge. Um, and that's that's Donald Trump. How how is it that you don't see Democrats looking at some of these big, big items and say, okay, well, clearly this side is totally against everything I really believe in? How come the Democrats definitely we're definitely seeing that Trump is now polling at 35 percent of black men. He's going to get much more than that. So in 2020. He got he was polling at eight percent of black men and he got 18 percent. He's now polling at 35 percent of black men. He's got the majority of Hispanics polling for him. We're seeing a mass defection of working class people of color away from the Democrats who are actively undermining them in their future towards Donald Trump. I'll tell you something else, Glenn. Donald Trump is the consensus candidate that Joe Biden pretended he was going to be. Yeah. You are so right. His entire agenda is right at the 50 yard line. It's where 70 percent of Americans are and zero percent of the elites. So we are seeing mass defection from the Democrats to Donald Trump in the working class. And we're seeing the elites, you know, the Nikki Haley GOP yes. elites will probably vote for Joe Biden. That's the political realignment that we're seeing. The rich are moving towards the Democrats or have moved to the Democrats, including conservative rich people. I bet you we know that Wall Street gave more money to Joe Biden than they did to Donald Trump. That's not an accident. So I think you're completely right about that. Well, not all rich people support Joe Biden. I don't know that. Uh, so the the elites... At what point do you think we break through the ice on people realizing that it's not Donald Trump uh, and Joe Biden, that it is truly the elites against, you know, uh, people who just say, hey, can 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 you pay attention to us in America first? Can you just can can you not continue to just put me underwater? When is, when are we going to break through that and stop playing the left right gain game and realize it's these people who think they're better than us that are just trying to put their foot on our neck all the time? I think that this election is going to come down to the working class, and I think it's going to become totally unignorable after that. The question is, what happens after that? These working class people are not voting for the Republicans. They're voting for Donald Trump. And if the GOP wants to keep these voters, they have to stop pushing 
tax cuts over everything else and they have to start listening to the working class. I interviewed 100 people and 25 of them are quoted at great length in my book, Second Class. You want to hear how working class people who agree with you about woke and agree with you about conservative values, but very much need an economic agenda. They need the GOP to stop pimping them out on the mm-hmm. altar of the woke ideas that they agree with, but that, you know, tickle the pickle of the of the conservative elites right and start creating an economic agenda for the working class the first party that gets to that combination of health care plus controlling immigration is going to have a ruling majority mm. uh body i thank you so much for being uh, uh being on the uh the name of the book again uh is really all about everything that we're doing right now everything you're feeling right now it's called second class batia thank you so much